Morocco is one of the most beautiful places I have ever been in my life. From the beaches to the deserts, from the forest to the ancient trading souks and bazaars, it is just a visually phenomenal place. I had no idea the place could even have forests, so if you were surprised to hear that, don't worry about it. Like I said, Morocco is mind-blowing. Only it's not just the sights that I found so memorable. The sounds of traditional instruments, of camels bellowing over, the whipping of the riders, and the smells of Morocco are also burned into my memory. Spices, incense, sweet perfumes, but also less wholesome things, like hashish. I'm not into smoking, at all really. I've always been really into keeping myself healthy, but I had some friends in uni who smoked, so I know what it smells like, and Morocco is full of the stuff. Anyway, at the end of our three-week trip, my girlfriend and I were typically late for the return flight. We're collectively so badly organized that I'm amazed we even managed to keep our heads screwed on. We're so late in our schedule that we had absolutely no chance of taking the advice of a fellow traveler that was given to us the night before. It seemed a bit weird, but he insisted that we get off in the bus halfway through, buy fresh tickets, and continue the rest of the journey. When I asked him why, he just sort of tapped on his nose with his finger, as to say, that's for me to know, and you to find out. He was a bit of a wanker, if I'm honest. I'm not about to follow the advice of someone like that, who might have just been messing with us, as if I had the money or time to spare to just buy a pair of new tickets for no bloody reason at all. So, we ignored his oh-so-sage advice, and just got on the bus we'd been planning on getting on. The next morning, we got on the bus, the last leg of our journey, to the capital. It was a very long, very uncomfortable journey in the rickety old vehicle that looked like it had been on the road since the 50s or something. Not to mention, it was compounded by the fact that for the first time on the entire trip, I'd managed to have eaten something that didn't agree with me. Needless to say, I was feeling pretty rough. When we finally got to the airport, we must have only had about an hour spare before our flight departed. So, we ended up hurrying through check-in, and must have appeared visibly anxious to all the staff present, which is generally not a good idea when traveling internationally. We also had a lot of Moroccan currency to change back into British pounds, and I remember the cashier looking rather suspicious at the fact we had so much, and that we seemed to be in a big rush to leave the country. In a rush to leave, and in my case, in a massive rush to find a bloody toilet, so I could, you know, see to some personal business resulting from the dodgy lamb I'd eaten the previous night. Chef Shawan makes loads of weed. Security tell them that and realize the change over, of course. It was Saad's law that all the blokes in security pulled us to one side for closer inspection of our luggage. It was just that we didn't need. So naturally, it's how things unfolded. Just our luck. And after clearing out pretty much everything we'd packed, he decides he should summon another member of security to take a further look. I then made the near-fatal mistake of informing him that I really needed to visit a restroom while we waited, explaining in my crappy Arabic that I had an upset stomach, pointing dramatically to my belly and making strained faces. He asked me in broken English, like, have you swallowed anything? And I take this to mean him asking if I'd taken any medicine for it which I nod or reply that I'd taken some stool hardener, but that they hadn't seemed to help in the least bit. It was only then that it dawned on me that what we had completely different understandings of the situation. Somehow, I'm guessing he'd seen our bus tickets, he knew where we traveled from, and starts explaining that this area is a big hashish-producing region, and that I'd require further inspection before I'd be allowed to board our flight. My heart sank, he thought I was a drug smuggler. I mean, I wasn't worried about them finding anything, as I wasn't what they suspected me to be at all. But all the delay meant that we missed our flight home, which would be a huge inconvenience at the time when we didn't need it to at all. Not only that, but them not finding anything meant that the inspection might get very, very thorough, if you catched my drift. I had been in previous physical danger of crapping my pants, but now... 
It was fear that became a clear and present danger to the integrity of my underwear. I tried to explain that I needed the loo, but by then, two armed police officers with sniffer dogs had appeared, and we were pretty much frog-marched into the corner of the security area. While we waited, confident, if a little nervous, for them to check out our bags, I was then escorted to an interview room, where a Moroccan immigration official literally poked at my stomach whilst asking me a series of questions in perfect English about my drug consumption habits. He asked me if I knew the area was a big hashish producing region, and I told him that I knew it was made all over Morocco. He asked if I'd ever been offered any whilst in the country, and I replied honestly that I had. Big mistake. He turned to his colleagues, smiled, and said something in Arabic which I'm almost certain would have translated to, we got one. After a bit of talking among themselves, the immigration officials tell me I'd have to wait. After a bit of talking amongst themselves, the immigration official tells me I'd have to wait while they brought in a doctor to examine me. Once again, I tried to explain that there had just been a horrible misunderstanding and that all I had was an upset stomach. Nothing illegal on me at all. I begged for them to let me go to the toilet, but the more I did so, the more certain they seemed that they'd caught me out and that any toilet trip would allow me to hide the evidence. This area makes loads of weed. Security tell them that. Realize why the change is over. My girlfriend was in tears as we waited. The whole thing was grimmer than grim, because the officials seemed to be taking a remarkable amount of pleasure in my suffering. I get that it's because they thought they'd caught a smuggler, and they probably got commission or something for doing so, so I can't really blame them for that but it just made the situation so much worse. Eventually, they announced that the doctor in question had arrived to examine me, but I didn't see any bloke in a white dock and stethoscope. Only the original two security officials who had pulled me laughed and told me to follow them, and if that I resisted, I'd be detained in a bloody Moroccan jail as a smuggler and charged with one trumped-up crime. Obviously, I had no choice but to follow them, I was led to a room deep inside some kind of detention center and was shocked by what I saw. It was something I'd never seen before, but laying eyes on the thing, it made a lot of sense. Very suddenly, perhaps too much sense. It was basically a large stainless steel toilet with no obvious method of flushing what was dumped into me. This is obviously where smugglers would evacuate whatever was inside of them before immigration officials could sift through the waste for whatever contraband they suspected of being secreted. Then the English-speaking official told me, in a very intimidating manner, that he was going to find out if I was lying or not. I actually thanked him for letting me use the toilet. Call it Stockholm Syndrome or whatever, but I was feeling rough, rough as a bear's arse by that point. But when I asked him if it was possible to get a little bit of privacy, his expression turned. He told me, in no uncertain terms, as he took out a latex glove and pulled it over his hand, that it was either I force out whatever was inside me, or he'd do it himself. I was absolutely horrified. This guy was massive. I mean a real bear of a man. And his hands were huge. Trembling with fear, I just nodded. He pushed me inside the room with a special toilet inside. Closed the door behind him then motioned through the plexiglass window for me to do my business. It was then that I realized that I would have to have some manner of revenge on the man, that I was about to do something truly disgusting, and that he was now the one that had no choice but to suffer through it. I did as I was told, pulled down my pants and began to fill the bowl with all that dodgy food that I had consumed the previous night. Again, the area makes loads of weed. Security tell them that. Realized why the change over there was a moment when I thought to ask him for some privacy again, but it slowly dawned on me that I no longer cared. If he wanted to hang around to realize the giant bloody mistake he'd made, that was his business. Besides, the pure relief I felt at finally sitting down at a toilet, well, that made what happened next so much bloody easier. I actually groaned with relief as an explosive, thundering poo fired out of my behind my butt temporarily becoming an arsenal of feces and intestinal mucus. I found myself looking up through the plexiglass window 
with a smug smile that said, I told you so. After a minute or so, he just shook his head, walked off, and left me to it. By the time I returned to my girlfriend, she was repacking our luggage, still a little shaken and uncertain as to what fate had awaited me in the airport detention center. She burst into tears again when she saw me, threw her arms around me while sobbing something along the lines of, let's just get out of here, I want to go home. My sentiments exactly. In an instance of unusual fortune, for people as disorganized as us, our flight ended up being delayed by a good few hours. So, we actually managed to get home without a hitch. But the whole experience taught me a lot. A whole lot. There are always bastard cops wherever you are. Learning your rights is up there with remembering your passport, and always make sure you carry some emergency monetary notes in case you need to bribe somebody in a disabled toilet in an airport in order to save yourself from a whole world of embarrassment and stress. In an instance of unusual fortune for people as disorganized as us, our flight ended up being delayed by a good few hours. So, we actually managed to get home without a hitch. But the whole experience taught me a lot. A whole lot. There are always bastard cops wherever you are. Learning your rights is up there with remembering your passport, and always make sure you carry some emergency monetary notes in case you need to bribe somebody in a disabled toilet in an airport in order to save yourself from a whole world of embarrassment and stress.